Today we are talking about the SpaceX moon landing, controversy swirling around Tesla autopilot, more full self-driving updates, one very pissed off Tesla owner in China, and yes, more Tesla crime fighting news. I'm making it a thing. All right, let's get going. Hey Elonites, welcome to the Tesla space where we share the latest news, rumors, and insights into all things Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk. In a huge win for SpaceX, they have been chosen as the company that will build the next vehicle to land on the moon. It's been 50 years now since astronauts have walked on the moon and NASA's Artemis program aims to change that by sending some astronauts to the moon in 2024. SpaceX was awarded a two 2.89 billion dollar contract to build a variation of the Starship that will touch down and take off from the lunar surface. NASA Associate Administrator for Human Explorations and Operations Mission Directorate Kathy Luders said, quote, this critical step puts humanity on a path to sustainable lunar exploration and keeps our eyes on missions farther into the solar system, including Mars. The Lunar Starship lander is only going to be used to transport people from orbit around the moon down to the surface and back up again. SpaceX plans to leave it behind on the moon to be used in a future base. During the first Artemis mission, the crew of four will travel from the Earth to the lunar orbit in the Orion spacecraft. From orbit, they'll send two crew members down to the moon in the SpaceX lander vehicle. After approximately a week exploring the surface, they will board the lander for their short trip back to orbit where they will return to Orion and their colleagues before heading back to Earth. So unfortunately, the biggest Tesla news for the start of this week happens to be incredibly tragic. Two people are dead after a Tesla Model S crashed into a tree at a high rate of speed and caught fire. Now a deadly car crash is terrible, but it's not exactly national news and that kind of thing does unfortunately happen. What makes this particular case stand out is that the police almost immediately declared that there was no person driving the car when it crashed and that fire raged out of control for hours. This announcement from police quickly led to news outlets running with the headline that this Tesla was self-driving or on autopilot when it crashed and burned and that naturally drew a lot of attention and stirred up controversy and the whole nine yards so now we're here talking about it. All of this comes just two days after Tesla released their Q1 safety report for this year and in that report Tesla are saying that driving Driving with autopilot engaged results in a 10 times lower chance of an accident than the average car. Tesla registered one accident for every 4.19 million miles driven in which drivers had autopilot engaged. And the national average for the US is an automobile crash every 484,000 miles. So it's an unfortunate coincidence that these two news stories are coming out so close together and we've got a lot to unpack here. Starting with the crash, Elon came out Monday afternoon noon and said that he had data showing that autopilot was not enabled. I'm assuming he meant at the time of the crash. Just a little more context on that would have gone a long way though. He also said that this particular car did not have full self-driving purchase so we really don't know what the hell was going on here. At the time we're writing this we know very little about the entire situation. Definitely not nearly enough to come to any conclusion. What we do know is that the car was a Tesla Model S made in 2019. It hit a tree and caught fire. We know that two people died in the car. One body was found in the passenger seat and one was found in the rear seat. Initial reports said that the car burned for hours and the fire department had to call Tesla and ask them how to put the fire out. That statement was later debunked by the fire chief who now says that the flames were put out in minutes and the fire department spent the rest of the time spraying small amounts of water on the batteries to keep them cool. Still, any evidence we have left is horribly burned by the initial fire. We do know the car left the house and traveled only a few hundred meters down a cul-de-sac before the crash happened and the police are saying that they are a hundred percent positive that no one was in the driver's seat driving the vehicle at the time of the crash. Elon says autopilot was not engaged and that makes sense based on the circumstances. The cul-de-sac road had no lane line markings so that alone should have prevented autopilot from starting. In the past you could use autopilot on unmarked 
Landmark Roads, but an update changed that sometime in the last year or so. Beyond that, it's been reported that autopilot won't engage if there's no weight detected in the driver's seat. Now, I don't know. I've never actually tried to activate it while not sitting in my seat, and I can't imagine anyone would ever really want to try that. And finally, no Tesla will drive if the seatbelt isn't buckled in the driver's seat. It's just a basic safety measure with or without autopilot. So the whole driverless car crashing itself theory seems to be totally debunked, but does this mean the police will admit they were wrong? Probably not. That's not how they usually operate, at least. In my opinion, there's a fairly simple explanation. If you look at the distance between the house and the crash, it's really not far at all. The family's going through enough. I'm not going to broadcast a picture of their house. You can find it if you want. But the point is, to have a crash this violent, they must have been flooring it. And they didn't just go straight off the road at the curve. They got halfway through the corner before hitting the woods. Pretty much exactly the point you would imagine them going off if they had panicked and overcorrected for a skid. Then maybe the driver tried to escape through the back door and he just didn't make it, which obviously sucks and is really sad. I know I've made similar mistakes and luckily just ended up in a ditch and not a tree, but this almost certainly has nothing to do with Tesla Autopilot. The odds just seem stacked against that theory. It's been a rough few days for Tesla's full self-driving software. We're now being told that the much anticipated beta button that would allow any FSD purchaser to download the new beta testing version has been delayed another month or maybe even more. We were originally expecting to see See this button appear sometime in March, but now it's been tied to the release of the FSD beta version 9, which will be the update that takes radar out of the picture and goes full into computer vision through the vehicle cameras. Elon is saying May is now the target and no later than June. So far, only about 1 to 2,000 select users have been allowed to try the new beta version of full self-driving that allows for the car to steer itself through city streets and intersections. It's the closest thing we've seen yet to a real autonomous vehicle. Until now, full self-driving has only been available to Tesla owners who pay an expensive upgrade fee to have the extra features. A couple of years ago, it was $7,000. Now the price is up to 10 grand. But Elon is saying that in May, a long rumored subscription service will open. This means that any Tesla owner will then be able to pay month by month for the same features. At the same time, as all of this new development is happening, we've now got the former head of Google's self-driving project talking shit about Tesla's full self-driving. Chris Urmson, the current CEO of an autonomous vehicle tech company called Aurora, was throwing all kinds of shade during a Bloomberg interview. He said that what he was working on with Google in 2010 was just as good as Tesla full self-driving today. Then he said that the Tesla robotaxi is never going to happen, and again said that what he did in 2010 was better. So I don't know if he's shitting on Tesla or if he's just trying to make himself feel better about the work he was doing 10 years ago because maybe the work he's doing now isn't going so great. So like if you were building those awesome autonomous robo taxi cars back in 2010, then where are they now, bucko? Where are they at? Because I'd love to see how much progress you've made in 11 years. That would be really dope. I don't really see them around though. And unless you're talking about Google's Waymo vans, hopefully not because that, that would be really embarrassing and uh, not inspire much confidence in the new company you're working. On. By the way, if you enjoy this kind of Tesla news update, then you would probably enjoy our weekly newsletter. You get all of this information we're talking about today, plus even more, and you get to see it all before YouTube. Sign up using our link in the description below. It only takes seconds, just one email every Tuesday morning, and that's at theteslaspace.com. Also, if you do sign up, be sure to check all your different inboxes to make sure we're going to your primary inbox and you're not missing out on your Tesla news update. A Tesla owner made a scene at the Shanghai Auto Show in China by jumping onto the roof of a Model 3 to protest. She wasn't trying to make a political point, she was just pissed off at Tesla for allegedly making faulty brakes. Apparently the protester was screaming, Tesla brakes failed me, while wearing a shirt that said, Tesla brake failure. This is one of many similar protests that have been popping up around China recently. In March, one owner said that a defective braking system almost killed her family. She printed, Tesla brake failure on her car. Interestingly, that's the exact phrase that was written on the woman's shirt at the Shanghai Auto Show. I can't imagine that's a coincidence, and there have been no wide reports of problems with Tesla's brakes in China or anywhere else. Could this be a bit of propaganda? Could a rival company like Neo or Xpeng have put them up to it? Now, I'm not saying that's the case, but I do smell a little bit of fishiness in the air, particularly after Xpeng were caught ripping off Tesla's autopilot using stolen source code that was brought over by a former Tesla employee. The employee 
they just lost a court case with Tesla and a large settlement was paid. And you can imagine whose wallet that settlement money is coming from. It's definitely Xpeng's. Here's something kind of neat. There is a new feature from Tesla that will create a pop-up notification for your Tesla if they think there is some form of defect. This seems to have started rolling out in Germany where some Model 3 owners got a pop-up box saying that they should bring their vehicle into a service station to be checked because some glue may have been applied wrong and water might get into the cabin. It's a really nice convenient feature. Now for our latest installment of Tesla's fighting crime, we're busting a racist arsonist. In December 2020, the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Presbyterian Church in Springfield, Massachusetts experienced a series of fires, one of which eventually destroyed the entire building. At the same time as the arsons, there were a number of cars being vandalized, mostly slashed tires, and one car had a wheel stolen. When the FBI found out that the car with the missing wheel was a Tesla, they eventually thought to pull the sentry mode footage and see if they could get a look at the suspect. Luckily, they had a shot of him looking straight into one of the cameras and were able to identify him from the Tesla video as a well-known racist scumbag. Within a few days, they were able to find the guy, arrest him, and put an end to his generally shitty behavior towards the world for now. Quick reminder to sign up for our newsletter. Again, it's at theteslaspace.com. There's a link down below in the description. If you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.